Last week I was in a code review. That code was working fine and it's nothing to complain and no performance issues, nothing, it's good. But I wanted to review that code because that's kind of a, in the first phase of the project, I didn't want to go deep and find something. So I wanted to see how the code smell is. So when I look into that code, I realize though code is working, though code has multiple modules, services and everything, the code violate all the clean code principle as much as they could. Because most of software engineers and most of architects don't consider those fundamental concepts of clean code. They don't think because the, if the code is working, as far as they're concerned, if the code is working, it's fine. No, it is not fine. You might do a project for a like period of one year or a two years. Then after that, APS or any other development team taking this project and taking for other probably five or ten years, right? So down the line, they may introduce new features, they may have to fix bugs, and they may need to do various things with your code. So if your code is not a clean code, then they are in trouble. So that means something you created. So today we are going to discuss one of three basic principles of clean code. That is a cohesion. There are two other principles we are going to discuss in upcoming videos. But today let's go and dive deep into the cohesions and see what are the type of cohesions and what are the best and what are the bad. Before diving into deep, we need to understand what the cohesion is. So it doesn't matter what the wiki says, doesn't matter what the internet says, doesn't matter what the book says, but in a practical term, what the cohesion mean, we are going to measure or we are going to see connectivity between your modules, components and functions. Or otherwise, how they talk to each other. What is the connectivity between them? Can we easily decouple them? Are they in the right place they're supposed to be? That is a simple practical term of the cohesion. So just think about the toolbox. If you get a toolbox, if the toolbox has hundreds of tools, you open the box and drop in there. And when you need a tool, it's really hard to find. But how about well-organized toolbox, right? So you have a different compartment and all the tools are, have a unique place to stay and they're in the right place and they're in the order. When you have a hammer, the nails are next to that. So like that, just think like that. So that is what the cohesion is. It's, even though you, you don't have that organized toolbox, it, it, it serves the purpose. You have all the tools there so you can find something when you need, right? But that is not the point. The point is it is not easy to find. It is, it is, not, it is very disorganized. It's code is same. The code is working but it's not well organized. So that is what cohesion means. So in general, cohesion, we, we are measuring seven uh, different cohesion types and from best to worst right so first one is the best and then last one is the worst so that is how we are going to do and first one is a functional cohesion the functional cohesion is the best thing that is the that is what the book says that is what i was encouraging in every single video put the things where it deserved for example if you have an employee module and have a bounded context do that and do it well so that is a functional cohesion. So don't bring project stuff into the functional stuff. So, so that is the way it, it comes. So for example, if you have an employee module, do employee create, update, delete, and manage all the employee related things park into that module. So that means you have everything what related to employee within that module. That being said, keep this in mind. So this is not a rule or this is not uh, something written on stone to follow. Most of the time, what and where things belongs to, most of the time it decides by architect and it's his choice. So why? Because for example, let's say we our example employee module. So we have two methods. One is uh, get employees project code and other one is uh, see employees project history. So if you are so sure there are nothing on board about the project, then there is no point creating a project module and park those two methods there. So architect might decide, okay, it's okay. These are only two methods we have. Let's park into the employee module. It is not that he violated like uh, some principle where he need to uh, take to the court or something. It is because he decide, okay, we don't need to create a project module because there are no other methods to go there. So like that, you may customize once in a while. That doesn't mean you're solely breaking the functional cohesion, but every possible ways you need to see, you need to try 
to have this module wrap only and only what that module talk about. So second one is sequential cohesion. Sequential cohesion is something uh, connected with the input and output. For example, you have a one method, so you input something that output is an input to a uh, different method. It's like a chaining one to other. For example, let's say you create an order and you get the order number and you create an inspection, order inspection. And then you get the, oh, get the order inspection number and you create the allocation, something like that. So what you have to do one and output of that is connected to something else. That is called sequential cohesion. And that is a second in the list. It is not bad. Again, you need to try those sequence are related to each other. If it is not, you need to go for the next one, which is a communication cohesion. The communication cohesion is something, again, it's like a chaining like a previous one, but it's completely different modules. For example, you have an order module and you have a notification module. You create an order and one after you create an order, you need to send a notification. So they are talk, they are, they are interconnected, but they're completely stay separate but they talk to each other based on the communication requirement. That is we call communication cohesion. And the next one is a procedural cohesion. Procedural cohesion is important because that is to execute in an order. For example, think your login module. You need to first validate authentication, then authorization, then policy validation. Right? You can do the authorization before the authentication because authentication means who you are, authorization means what you can do and policy validation means how extent you can do it. So in that case, you need to first identify the user authentication, then you need to run authorization, then you need to run uh, policy validation. So those type of thing what go in a sequence order, we call procedural cohesion. Now you may already realize when you go down step by step, the quality of the code getting low, right? So you are, you are creating some error prone things. So these are, you are creating some problems when you go down. So for example, this type of procedural cohesion is very error prone. That can lead to errors. Also the previous cohesion we discussed about the communication cohesion and if something is break or if some module is unavailable or some module has a problem then you're breaking the flow right so this type of cohesion can create a problem that's what I, I told from top are the best when you're going down we are uh, step by step we are going to weak cohesion types right so next one is a temporal cohesion so temporal cohesion is uh, bounded with the time of execution Right? For example, when you start application, you have to do a bunch of work. Those are not related to each other. For example, you may fetch configurations and then you may fetch some uh, feature toggles which don't have a connectivity connection between each other. And probably then you need to publish your health message or health props. Then that doesn't have a relationship with the previous one. And also you may have a refresh or evict caching. Then that doesn't have a relationship with any of above. Right. So likewise, you are doing a bunch of thing in a startup. So you in those are those are not related to each other other than the time of execution. Right. So those are we call temporal cohesion. So these temporal cohesion are not like bounded with something other than the time of execution. That is the, that's the most important thing you need to understand. The next one is a logical cohesion. The logical cohesion is something grouped by the ta uh, task they are performing. Right? For example, best example is a Java string util module. So there are a bunch of methods packed into the same util module. They don't have a relationship with each other, but they are doing this activity on a string. That is the only reason they are stay together. Also, you may have util modules in your project. That util module has a bunch of methods. Some are maybe sorting, searching, and uh, like reading files, writing files formatting files, doing a bunch of things which are not related to each other, but all of them are in the util module. Why? Because those are utils. Doing the similar thing, but unrelated. So those type of cohesion we call logical cohesion. And then the coincidental cohesion. That is the weakest thing. You should avoid this at any cost. Why? This is, I mean, I hope you know about the goat class. That means everything you put, uh, everything you can find, you put in the same class. For example, if you get the Spring Boot application or any other uh, REST service application like a NAS, you can write entire logic in the controller. It's going to work, right? But we have a separation of concern. Controller is to handle the traffic and the exception handling, service to business logic, and a repository to database transaction. 
Why? Because that make that create a clean code. But other than that, if you write any everything on the controller, it still is going to work. So this type of coincidence cohesion is a bad thing. Why? Because you have like it's like a dustbin. You have everything there which is not related, not doing the same thing, no any manner they are talking to each other, but you put everything there. It's like sometimes all of us have other folder in our hard drive, right? So you have everything, you're like you have a docs, you have a finance, you have a movies, you have a images and everything, then you have a other. This other folder has everything where you can find somewhere else. So something like this, don't do this, avoid this coincidence and cohesion at any cost. Everything else is case by case, uh, like if you need you can use if you don't need and uh, like you can if you can avoid you can avoid so today we learn first rule out of three we are how we can write a clean code so I hope you can go back and practice so look at your projects you're working right now and see whether you're following these practices and where are you violating these practices so if you're violating it's right time to think about to create a tech debt and think to refactor so then I'll talk to you again in the next video until then stay safe Take care.